What's up guys, Max here and welcome back to my dungeon. Today, in the second episode of the discovery of the phase change cooler, I'm going to show you exactly what is capable of. So I'm going to plug this uh, assembled phase change cooler into my uh, Z690 AVGA. So with a 12900KS and I'm going to try to push the most out of it. And you can see uh, the, the temperature and the, the power consumption, so everything. So stay tuned and get straight to the point. Before we start, I want to explain you a little bit what I'm going to do and the tools that I'm going to use. And if you didn't check my first episode, I really suggest you to do that because I explain in detail every component. So <clears throat> main thing here is that everything is mounted. As you can see here, we have the compressor, the heat exchanger that is connected to an AO, um, an alpha cool Ace Bio 240, the extreme version, so it's a very powerful AO, but still is a really compact unit. Then the, the gas will go through here so we can see if it's liquefied or not by this visor. And then visor, sorry, and then we have the filter and the capillary tube. So the gas compressed will be here. And this is what we are going to cool. So this is where the magic happens. So this is the part that is in contact with the CPU. And this will be installed in the in the motherboard. Then the gas, once that is vaporized, it reaches really low temperature. Let, let's say negative 40 or something like that, negative 50 even, and then the very cold gas will be sucked by the compressor. But doing so, I have to isolate very well this part of the tube because I want to avoid that the ice will form or the condensation and the water gets dripped into my components, causing, of course, uh, a really horrible death. So we don't want that. And that is why is so very careful uh, isolated from the outside air. So here the, the, the cold will stay inside and with this layer of protection we don't have any condensation at all. And if you do the same in the socket area as well, it will be protected for the temperature that we are going to do. I ran a system like that for years, like 15, 16 years ago. So if you do it properly, there's no risk. Of course, you have to check it once in a while if it's sealed properly, but if you do the things again properly, it is completely safe. And then about the tool, well, before, this is what this one looks like. So this is the the part that you can see here. So it's like a, um, a CPU water block. So we have the fins here, the gas go through here, and with, in the contact uh, with the, uh, this copper, uh, let's say, heatsink, it will really freeze. And this is placed like this with the tubing. So at least you know now, uh, the inside of an, an evaporator. This is made by Bart, uh, a really nice guy in Poland that makes really a lot of good extreme overclocking stuff. Anyway, so then we have our thermometer here. We can check the, the, the temperature of the evaporator, so the CPU. We can check the temperature of the heat exchanger to see if uh, the cooling power of our AO is enough or not. Then we here measure the watts of only the compressor. So we have the, the ASUS Tor uh, uh, PSU that we can read the actual power consumption of the system, that system, also the PC. And here separately, we can detect the power consumption of this unit. So we can then check if we have uh, a very big consumption despite of the gain that we have. So this is very nice to understand if it's worth or not, like power consumption wise. Here I have a signal generator that let me um, pilot the controller of the compressor manually so I can decide it if I want to run it at 100% or let it do his thing in auto. And uh, well, I tried to solder a controller to the inverter uh, logic board, but it seems that I was thinking that uh, I was able to do it by Modbus, a protocol, but turns out that I need another chip that convert the Modbus into the link bus. Anyway, I'm going to buy that, uh, that let's say, that, con that gateway, that controller, but it's going to take some time. So probably later in the episodes, I will try to tune at the best uh, the uh, controller of the inverter motor. So uh, for now, I just limit to uh, manually set uh, the motor manually, of course, and let it run on auto and then we will check. But I will have to tune the uh, controller manually. But something that I will do later on. And finally, we have here a tool to check the pressure. 
So with this tool, I can check the actual pressure in the system right now. But when I turn the system on, this will do like negative uh, um, pressure. So now we have like a 76.41 bar because it's the entire system at rest. But then we will have like a 12 to 15 bar on the when the compressor is pushing the gas. And here we should have negative pressure. So by sucking the, the gas from the evaporator and generating a negative pressure by the property of the gas, we will have a very low negative temperature on the CPU. And we have to check that this will stay very low so we can monitor if everything is working properly. So now we're going to mount everything to the motherboard and we'll see this thing running in a real world situation. Okay, so now we are ready. As you can see, the evaporator is connected to the CPU. And now I'm going to start the system, let it go down a bit in temperature, and we will start the motherboard. Usually it takes seconds, so, well, you will see. Now everything is on, so our PC is on and our cooler is on. I have 200 watts here and not a fully negative pressure here. Why? Because I uh, overcharged a bit the system because I want to see the right uh, uh, level of refrigerant that I need to do the job. In this case, with more refrigerant, I should have a more stable temperature, although not uh, the minimum temperature I can achieve. That is negative 33 right now, but this system, I saw the system with less gas run at like negative uh, uh, 50, negative 53. So I want to, to find the balance between the, the maximum lower temp I can have, but with a system stability that I don't want, that if I charge the system with more load, I don't want to have spike in temperature like negative 50 and then uh, 10 degrees of 20. So I want to keep the temperature as stable as possible, even under load. So I might need later on to connect a hose here and vent out of the window, literally, because I have a tube under the win out, out of the windows, to vent some of the refrigerant outside. This is a gas that uh, is highly flammable, so I have to do it safely, so I have to vent it outside. But we will see that later. So now we will see 200 watts and negative 33. The system is at the BIOS now, so it's just you know idling and not... Uh, loading very much the CPU, so I'm going to try to game like this and see what happens. As you can see, I'm running at 6 GHz with the, the P-Core and we have 230 watts and negative 32 degrees with a pressure of 0 0.75. And as I told you before, I can drop some refrigerant to have lower temperature and lower watt, a lot lower watt, because in my test I did something like uh, um, negative 40 or something like this at 130 watts. But I want to see how this system can react uh, to this charge of refrigerant. And as you can see, I can stay at 6 gigahertz without any problem gaming. So yeah, 230 watts is not uh, low, but hey, I'm playing at 6 gigahertz. Come on. This is something really interesting. And I'm pushing... Um, um, like a 144p everything on ultra and the 3019 king ping is at 100%. So I'm like GPU limited right now. So let's uh, turn this low a bit. Okay, so, well, uh, I think it's pretty high and I'm still, okay, now, now it is a bit better, but I'm really pushing the limit of the 3019 king ping that I have the uh, extreme overclocking BIOS. And if you can see here, I'm running at 400 watts right now. So I'm really pushing this card in World of Warcraft to 1080p. So yeah, the CPU is doing a lot of work, 100%. So probably I will try to, to higher the frequency a bit. Now I'm running AIDA stress test, uh, the CPU stress test. So no, not AVX. And uh, we are at uh, negative 27, which is nice, 262 watts. And we have like one bar of pressure. So it's normal that with more loads, we have more pressure and uh, a slightly higher temperature. But still, I'm stress testing at 5.8 gigahertz uh, and still having a decent uh, temperature. And well, power consumption is up to the system that is now at 370 watts plus this 270. 
Okay, so we're talking about 600 watts. That is not uh, enormous to have a system that is running at 5.8 gigahertz all core. Not bad at all. But uh, honestly, it's not what I wanted because I don't need this CPU to sustain this uh, type of stress test. Uh, and uh, I want to be a gaming PC. So what I'm going to do now is to discharge a bit uh, of uh, the, uh, the gas and reach lower temperature with lower power consumption so I can have more frequency for the gaming. And then uh, we will see what happens. All right. Now that I have vented some uh, gas refrigerant out of the system, as you can see, I still have uh, enough refrigerant to be liquefied and complete the cycle, but I have less power consumption because the compressor is actually uh, doing less work to compress less gas at the time. So I have 142 watts and negative 46 that is dropping. And now I have a slightly negative pressure at uh, uh, negative 0 0.15. So, uh, I can vent more uh, refrigerant if I want, but I think with that uh, type of charge, uh, I will be able to have uh, interesting results. Uh, what I'm looking after is like 6.2 gigahertz, uh, and let's say in gaming, not less, uh, let's say, or not more than negative 30, 35. So what I'm trying to do is uh, to find a good settings that allows me to play, especially World of Warcraft or games, with a nice uh, frequency, but with the system stable, so not, uh, uh, you know, having a very low idle, but then suddenly ramp up in temperature when the thing gets a bit, uh, uh, you know, uh, loaded and the CPU will spike, uh, causing, of course, system crashes. So I want to try to find balance. And now I'm going to check uh, in game playing what uh, these uh, new settings means. All right, so after a couple of tests, I saw that I cannot go past much at uh, 6 GHz. I can play like a 6.2, but it's not fully stable, even though I have negative 40. But anyway, my goal is to have a system that can stay at 6 GHz, which is a lot. And you see the RAM that are 7000 MTs. I'm using the 3019 Kingpin, and is almost at 100% of 1080p. So I'm really almost uh, uh, bottlenecked by the GPU, and it's a hell of a GPU. So uh, the goal is to have a really the best CPU I can. And I think I met the goal because we are still at negative 38. We are running at 148 watts. And uh, the system, the, the, the compressor is not running at 100%. So now the noise is very low. I bet that uh, when this it will be inside of a chassis, the noise will be like uh, like a case uh, with uh, some fun, but not not uh, loud at all. Uh, then I will try to make some uh, you know, noise reduction inside the chassis, but that this is for a later episode. So now we have zero bar. So the, when the system, when the, the compressor is on auto, it try to, to get uh, uh, the compressor stay at zero uh, bar. So it's kind of trying to find the balance between the power and the pressure. I don't know exactly what it does like this, but when I can try to enter the, the configuration of the controller, I will try to know more about that, how to tune it for best performance. But right now we have a negative 38, 150 watts, the CPU running stable at six gigahertz, and I can run a bit more if I want, but I prefer to be stable because this will be a daily gaming rig. So. Uh, this extra room for, with temperature and maintaining six gears will allow me to uh, play in, in total stability, but we will do some really more intensive tests and later on. So now I just want to see the system working and what I'm capable of. So we are talking about the negative 38 with a 12900K overclocked. I'm talking about six gigahertz on the P core with all the core enabled, also the E core. The ring is running at five uh, gigahertz so we have as well the ring overclocked the memory are at uh, 7000 mtc32 with the very low timings that are water cooled uh, with the alpha cool water block and uh, here we have uh, i think a decent power consumption considering that playing with this kind of rig uh, we are like now at um, 450 watts for the system plus other 150 watts for the cooler. So we are talking about 600 watts. That is not uh, uh, a lot with a 6 uh, uh, gigahertz i9 and a 3090 Kingpin with the, the uh, extreme overclocking BIOS. Uh, so yeah, 600 watts for a system like this. I mean, 
I find it pretty good. So uh, let me know in the comment section what you think uh, if 600 baht uh, for a 6 giga system i9 uh, is okay for you. But anyway, so as you can see here, we have uh, like 200, 250, 200. Uh, I mean, this system is just insane. All right, so we came to the end of this episode and was quite interesting, isn't it? I mean, uh, the goal was completely achieved, I think. So 6 gigahertz, uh, i9, uh, 50 uh, multiplier of the ring. So we had a system that was really, really pushed and negative 40 constantly for gaming. So yeah, I think for this stage of the project, I'm pretty happy, really, really happy. Uh, maybe uh, later on I can try to swap the refrigerant uh, or charge less, uh, charge more, I don't know. But at this stage, uh, I think we are on the right track to build the fastest gaming rig in the world. And maybe with the new CPUs, I can try to do more than 6 gigahertz, I'm pretty sure. But so far, as you have seen, this is like a beast, no doubt. So in the next episode, I will try to start, uh, let's say, uh, measuring uh, the system, how to make it even smaller. And maybe I can try to, to buy a chassis and start, you know, uh, trying to place the pieces to to make a good chassis because at this point i think uh, the performance wise is fine maybe i can try to play a bit with the controller if i can buy the gateway so i can try to optimize a bit more uh, especially on when i'm on idle i would, I would like to try to to charge a bit less of, of the gas so to achieve like 50 watts of idle uh, power consumption because i I tried already and I know that it's possible to have like 50 watts when the system is on idle and then uh, when the system starts to uh, load some games or whatever to uh, ramp up to 120. So I can um, manage to get the system much more efficient on um, power wise and the temperature I think with this type of gas uh, we are pretty there so uh, 6 gigahertz is uh, stable and, and, and I can operate the system safely at uh, this frequency and temperature. So yeah. Uh, now I think the video was quite long as well, so don't forget to subscribe as always so you cannot miss the next episode that will be, I think, cooler than this one, literally. So have a great day and see you in the next one.